Hello and welcome back to another Django tutorial. Now in this tutorial we're going to talk about WSGI. This may be way above your head if you're just starting out in Django. Maybe way above your head if you're just starting out with building websites. But as I promised beforehand and as some of you know when I do tutorials especially with Python um, I go pretty deep into things. and I like to dig into and show you guys things that you wouldn't think about, right? So, all right, we're building this Django site and you guys would just saw this WSGI file down here. Have no idea what it is. Um, and you could have, hey, trust me, you could have went through and built the most amazing Django site you wanted to and never had to worry about this WSGI file because we never write to this file. But understanding what it does will help you understand the whole um, Django project in itself. And if you guys can understand the whole Django project, it will make your life so much easier. Make you make things make writing code so much easier. All right, because if you understand the whole project, then you understand the flow. And once you understand the flow, your code starts flowing, and things are so much easier. All right, so let's get into this real quick. I'm going to try not to take up too much of your time, but let's discuss the WSGI file. All right, and what it means and um, I'm also going to throw a, wow, I didn't think of that out there to you. All right. So what's WSGI stand for? Stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. All right. That's all it is, is an interface between the server and our Django uh, application. Now, here's the thing that most people that start out with Django don't realize is hey, you guys have been learning some Python for a while or something like that, or you saw Django, you know, has a pretty cool uh, um, way of going about building awesome applications online. The thing you probably didn't think about is, how am I going to host this project? Um, and I know when I first started learning Django way back when, um, when I first start writing project, I didn't think about how I was going to host a project. It never crossed my mind. I thought I could just go over to like uh, some Joe Schmo hosting company and upload my awesome project. And it doesn't work that way. Um, so the WSGI interface, basically the server needs to be configured to handle or communicate with the WSGI interface. And if the server is not configured to handle or work with WSGI, then you can't host your Django site there. Now there's an exception to that rule and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, so if you're going to go and build this awesome uh, Django uh, project and you're going to go through this whole tutorial series with me, and you guys are going to, you know, understand Django and build all these cool things. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to go host my site at, uh, you know, like I said, Joe Schmo Hosting Company. And you got to upload your site and you upload the files and it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because they're probably not configured to work with WSGI. And most like uh, big name uh, hosting companies that you see like commercials for out there, um, you know, I, I don't want to throw any names out there, but some of the the hosting companies out there where like uh, Bob, the, the lawnmower guy, can go out and throw up his four-page website on, they're probably not configured to handle uh, WSGI. Um, so that's something you need to think about before, you know, moving forward. Uh, am I going to be okay with going with um, a cloud-type based hosting company? Because I know some people out there have their own servers already because they're running a bunch of different websites like WordPress sites and stuff like that that they've built. Um, just be prepared that you're going to have to go with a, a server that can handle Django and communicate with Django. So let's talk about what SGI is. And like I said, it's a web server gateway interface. And what it does is it allows the server to communicate with our application. And basically, it's a one-way communication. It, the server takes a request from the user or the client, if you will, and takes that request and sends it to our application. And it sends the sends a request through WSGI. And that's how the server can communicate with our Django 
uh, project here. And then Django will take that request and do a bunch of stuff that we'll discuss in the next tutorial and send back a response to the client. So that's how the whole internet works is request and response, request, response, all right? So for um, a Django project to work, it needs WSGI. The server needs to be able to work with WSGI and that's how they communicate. If we didn't have that, they would not be able to communicate and basically our website would be dead and wouldn't work, all right? So that's what WSGI is. Now there's an uh, exception to the rule, all right? Like I said, like I just beat around the bush saying, WSGI, you must have it, you must have it, must have it. There is an exception to the rule, all right? And if you go over to um, Django here, you see there is how to use Django with Apache and mod WSGI, all right? And this is the exception, exception to the rule. In here, there's another setup for an Apache type server. Um, that's running Apache, a server that's running Apache. And then you can use mod WSGI, which is a modification of WSGI that will communicate with WSGI. All right. So basically, this just modifies the way WSGI is asking for information from the server. This way, so Apache can communicate with it, if you understand that. All right. So there, there is an exception to the rule. If you're curious on how this works, if you have an Apache server, uh, I highly suggest you go over to Django, look up uh, Apache and mod underscore WSGI, and figure it out uh, by reading their documentation, because that's above what we're going to do in this tutorial. This tutorial series, we are uploading to Heroku, who has WSGI already configured on their server, so we will not have a problem there. All right. Um, so that's the information on there. If you're uh, curious like I always am curious about everything, uh, if you want to read what um, the specifications of uh, the Python Web Server Gateway Interface, which is WSGI, you can go to uh, just Google uh, PEP333, uh, uh, Python PEP333, PEP333, and that will give you, uh, it's right here, PEP333. That will give you the um, the web the web page for all the specifications for WSGI. And this is what Python set for to say, hey, this is how it should work. And if you want to read about it, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, and one last thing, if you really want to understand what WSGI is, you can come down here on Django, click on WSGI. And this is a, a pretty cool documentation all about WSGI and how it works. All right. But just so you guys understand, if you're going to upload a Django site, the server must be WSGI compatible. If not, your other s solution would be an Apache server. And then you're going to have to use mod WSGI. And that documentation can be found on Django. All right. So in the next tutorial, We'll talk about how Django takes the request from the server and processes, processes the whole process and spits the response back to the user. Once you understand that, you pretty much understand Django. So I'll see you guys then.